So these set of videos are going to take you through Unit 1.7, Quantitative Chemistry. And that word quantitative essentially just means amount. So we're going to be doing a little bit of maths in, within this topic, a little bit of calculation work. And essentially it just um, allows us to work out um, the quantities of um, reactants involved in a particular reaction or the quantity or the amount of substance that is formed from a reaction. And the reason there's a little mole on the front um, is in chemistry, this is all to do with calculating the number of moles of a substance. And we'll come on to that later in the topic. So at the start of your notes, as always, you have your specification on page one and the start of page two. For this topic, you will definitely need your periodic table right throughout the topic. So if you haven't already done so, get your periodic table out now. So let's get stuck in on page two where it says relative atomic mass. This is a term that we have come across before. We calculated the relative atomic mass from isotopes in unit 1.1, our atomic structure topic. Um, and, and please keep that in your mind. And the values given to you on your periodic table are actually the relative atomic mass. Let's have a quick look at that. So if you haven't already done so, get your periodic table out now. So here's the periodic table that you have in front of you. Um, and make sure it is out in front of you because you'll need to use it loads for this topic. Um, so let's just pick um, an element, say boron. And we'll zoom in there. Okay, so we've got boron at symbol, which is B, and we have two numbers. What's this bottom number? It's the atomic number, which if you remember back to our atomic structure, tells us the number of protons in an atom, which is also equal to the number of electrons if it is an atom as opposed to an ion. Um, the top number then, sometimes we talk about this as the mass number, um, but it, more accurately, it is given the term relative atomic mass. So this is your relative atomic mass. Um, for most of the elements on your periodic table, that number is a whole number. Um, but take, for example, chlorine, which is over in group 7. Its relative atomic mass is 35.5. Can you remember why that is? Well, it's because chlorine exists as two isotopes. It exists as chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. But there's not an even amount of each atom. So these are just two different atoms of chlorine. They're the same element because they have the same number of protons. But they have a different number of neutrons, which gives them a different mass number. So these different isotopes um, occur in different abundances. So 30, chlorine 35 is the most predominant one. It makes up 75% of all chlorine atoms and chlorine 37 makes up 25% of all, of all chlorine atoms. So if we were to work out the relative atomic mass, let's just give it RAM um, as short for now. What we would do, if you remember back to uh, topic one, atomic structure, we would take the mass of our first isotope, which is 35, and multiply it by the abundance, the percentage abundance. So it makes up 75% of all chlorine atoms. We would then add on the mass of the next isotope, 37, multiplied by its abundance, which is 25%. We're working out an average, essentially, and so we need to put this over 100%, which is, you know, 100% of all atoms, all chlorine atoms. If you put that into your calculator, the relative atomic mass, essentially the average mass of all of the chlorine atoms put together is 35.5. So that calculation would come out as 35.5. So that's where we get a decimal value for chlorine. Um, but also to help you remember that this top number is the relative atomic mass. If you go into the, to the very bottom left hand corner, so zoom out here, move this along, the very bottom left, you're given a little key um, for each of the atoms. So X is representing the symbol. X represents the symbol. The bottom number, B, is the atomic number. And A, the top number, is your relative atomic mass. 
But one other thing I want you to spot from the relative atomic masses that are given to you on the periodic table. Let's take thorium just to the right of this key here. Its relative atomic mass is 232. Its relative atomic mass is 232. But 232 what? The mass is normally measured in grams or kilograms or even tons. But we're not actually given a unit here. There is no unit to relative atomic mass. So that's where our definition comes in because essentially what we've seen so far is that relative atomic mass certainly is what we've calculated it um, as is the average mass of an atom compared to all the isotopes of that particular element. But we get a value, like for chlorine, we got chlorine 35.5. That was its relative atomic mass. But 35.5 what? It has no units, and that's where we need a definition. What is this relative atomic mass compared to? What unit is it in? Why does it not have a unit as such? So we're going to go back to page two and have a look at our definition. So looking at page two, we're going to answer that question of why is there no unit when it comes to relative atomic mass? Because mass is usually measured in grams or kilograms or tons, um, as I said in the previous slide. Um, but because atoms are so, so small, um, atoms are incredibly small. So if we looked at the mass of a hydrogen atom, it has a mass approximately equal to 1.6725 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. You may not have done standard form, but let me write that number up for you. There it is in a normal number, 0 0.0000000 and so on. Um, 23 zeros after the decimal point there, 16725 grams. So that's an incredibly, incredibly small number. And obviously that's a very awkward number to write out, as is 1.6725 times 10 to the minus 24. Can you imagine if we had a number like that for every single element in the periodic table? Whereas hydrogen on our periodic table, what does it look like? Well, it's given the symbol H, it's got an atomic number of one, and it's got a relative atomic mass of one, but its actual mass is 1.6725 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. So rather than using those really awkward numbers, we use what we call the carbon 12 scale. The carbon 12 scale. Essentially what we do is we pick a standard and we compare everything else to that. We compare the mass of every single other element to that standard as such. And for some reason, the um, standard they picked was a carbon-12 isotope. And what we mean by a carbon-12 isotope is one that has a mass number of exactly 12. So the mass number is exactly 12, not the relative atomic mass. Um, so let's have a look at that. So if we had carbon-12, its mass number is 12. And what do we mean by the mass number? Well, the mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. That's a definition we learned um, back in topic one, atomic structure. So we're not talking about relative atomic mass here. We're talking about the specific mass of this specific isotope. So it has a mass number of 12. What about its atomic number? Have a look to the periodic table. What's the atomic number of carbon? Its atomic number is six. And what does that mean? It means there are six protons in um, the, the nucleus of an atom. So if we look at this carbon-12 isotope, it has a mass number of 12. Why is that? Well, that's because it has six protons, as we have seen with the atomic number. And it will ha also have six neutrons. And that gives it a mass of exactly 12. So six protons plus six neutrons is a mass of 12. A mass of exactly 12. We're not talking about an average at, um an average mass of, of all carbon atoms, we're talking about this particular isotope. So remember, isotopes have a specific mass number because they have a specific number of protons and neutrons, which each count for a mass of one. But even back in our atomic structure topic, we gave them a relative mass of one. So this is all relative, and it's all relative to carbon. That's our standard. 
So let's bring all that together into our definition. And this is such an important definition to learn. So when you get your quantitative chemistry question in your exam, I can almost guarantee you'll either get this definition or the definition of a mole, which we'll come to later in the topic. This particular definition would be worth three marks in total. So make sure you learn it really well. It is a bit wordy, but hopefully now that we've got that bit of background information, we'll actually understand it. So I've set it out in the three marks. So each line is a mark each. So the first point you have to say is that the relative atomic mass is the mass of the atom. Okay, simple as that. It's the mass of an atom. You're essentially just rephrasing that term atomic mass and you're saying it's the mass of an atom. Sometimes you can say the average mass of an atom if you want to get in that idea. Again, think of the chlorines. It's the average mass of all chlorine atoms. Um, so you can put that term average in if you like, but you won't get penalized if you don't have it. So relative atomic mass is the average mass of the atom. What do we compare it to? Because we know it has no units. Um, so what, what do we compare it to? We've got to have a standard as such. So carbon-12 isotope is our standard. And that's something you need to learn. You need to learn that the standard we, we have compared it to is the carbon-12 isotope. So see, mass of an atom compared with that of the carbon-12 isotope which has a mass of exactly 12. So that's how your definition is broken up. Here's your first point. The relative atomic mass of an atom is the average mass of the atom, or just the mass of the atom, compared with that of the carbon-12 isotope. So that's what we compare it to, which has a mass of exactly 12. And I know that's quite wordy, but you've got to learn that. That's worth three marks in total. So just keep saying that. Keep saying it out loud and um, keep writing it out until you have learned that really, really well um, because it's so important. So essentially, the values that you're given in the periodic table, they're not actual mass values um, because those values would be very, very complicated. So we take a standard. Our standard is the carbon-12 isotope and we compare the mass of every atom to that and we say it has a mass of exactly 12. That last point is so important and again we're taking that as a set value. It doesn't actually have a mass of 12 grams or 12 kilograms or anything like that. We are just saying okay it's got a mass of 12 units and let's compare everything else to that. Sometimes the definitions say compared to a twelfth of the mass of carbon-12 isotope and that's simply because um, one twelfth of twelve is one. So in that second line, you can also rephrase it as compared with that of a twelfth of the mass of carbon-12 isotope, but that just makes it a little bit more complicated. But just if you see that in mark schemes, it'll quite often be in brackets because it's not actually required. So again, relative atomic mass of an atom is the average mass of the atom compared with that of the carbon-12 isotope which has a mass of exactly 12. So learn that, rewrite it, keep saying it out loud until it's in your head because it's so important. So over on the next page, I just want to introduce you to three terminology, even before we fill out this um, fill out this page. Um, so we've just talked about the relative atomic mass and obviously that only applies to atoms. Um, so it only applies to single atoms. I'll maybe put that word single in front of that. Single atoms, and that's what we just mean by monoatomic. So we've talked about diatomic elements being elements that consist of two atoms covalently bonded together. Monoatomic elements are just simply one um, one atom, single atoms. Um, so essentially it's the mass of the atom as it appears in the periodic table. So um, for potassium, it's just the mass of one single potassium atom. For chlorine, it would be the mass of one single chlorine atom and so on. So relative atomic mass is used for monoatomic elements, which we mean just single atoms by that. There's two other terms that you might come across, um, one more common than the other. Um, one is relative molecular mass, and that's essentially the mass of a molecule. Um, so you could write that above. So that's the mass of a molecule and it's used for compounds um, and diatomic elements. So the likes of um, Cl2 or Br2, we would have to use relative molecular mass. 
because it's not just a single atom, it's a molecule. And then the most common one you'll come across is this term relative formula mass. Um, and it can actually be used instead of relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass. It's essentially um, can be used as a general term. And it just means the mass of one formula. It's the mass of one formula of the element or compound. So, um, for example, the RFM of water, H2, is a mass of one H2O molecule. Um, the relative formula mass of sodium is the mass of... Um, one sodium atom. So you can see it can be um, used interchangeably. So for water, it's the mass of one water molecule. For sodium, it's the mass of one sodium atom. Whatever your formula is, it's the mass of one of that formula. And you'll come across that term quite a lot. Um, and you'll have to calculate the relative formula mass, um, which is what we'll come on to. Um, so let's go back for a second to this term relative atomic mass. And what I would like you to do is to try and fill out this table. And essentially what you have to do is find the element um, on the periodic table, write in its symbol, and then write in its relative atomic mass, which remember is the top number. So I could write that there. Um, top number um, for an element that you find on the periodic table. Um, so pause the video now and try and fill that in yourself. So to just uh, check those and check that you have those correct in your notes, for beryllium you should have found the symbol was Be and its relative atomic mass was 9. Magnesium is Mg and its relative atomic mass is 24. For nitrogen its symbol is N, its relative atomic mass is 14. For copper its symbol is Cu and its relative atomic mass is 64. For bromine it's Br and its relative atomic mass. Remember, this is just the mass of one atom of that element. I know bromine's diatomic, but this is just the relative atomic mass. Um, it's 80 for oxygen. Its symbol is O, and it has a relative atomic mass of 16. For hydrogen, its symbol is H, and it has a relative atomic mass of 1. For carbon, its symbol is C, and it has a relative atomic mass of 12. For iron, our symbol is Fe and it has a relative atomic mass of 56. So just check that and make sure those are right. So what we're moving towards is um, calculating this um, relative formula mass. That's what we're moving towards being able to calculate that. But in order to calculate the RFM, the relative formula mass um, of a compound, it's important that you are able to calculate how many atoms of each type of element are present. So we're, we're going to kind of just take a small bit of this and make sure we know how to do this way. Um, before actually putting it together to calculate relative formula mass. Um, so again, we've discussed this before when we have been looking at equations and counting up the number of atoms in an equation um, on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, but just um, to go over that again. So first of all, a small subscript number only applies to the element before it. Um, so for example, CH4 means that you have four hydrogens. So the four comes after the H, so that means four hydrogens, but it doesn't apply to the carbon. You've only got one carbon atom. Um, so here we've got Na2O. So that little two applies to the element that, um, that comes before it. So that means that we have two Na, which is two sodium atoms. And then we've got this symbol O, a capital O, which means oxygen, but there's no number after it, which just means I have one oxygen atom. So if there's no number after it, then it just means there's one of those atoms. And then the other thing to be careful with is brackets. Um, so when there are atoms inside a bracket, the number outside the bracket multiplies everything inside the bracket. So here you've got... Um, here you've got calcium hydroxide and we can see there for calcium first of all there is um it's not inside the brackets so the bracket the number outside the bracket doesn't apply to it and it has no number after it and um, so there's just one calcium atom so there's one calcium then with oxygen there's one in the bracket but there's a two outside the bracket so that means we multiply it by two so it's one multiplied by two is two and the same for hydrogen there's one inside the bracket multiplied by two 
is two hydrogen so that number outside the bracket multiplies and that's basically because calcium hydroxide is a calcium ion and um, well maybe not put the charge in the ion and um, just in case that confuses things so we've got a calcium ion and then we've got two hydroxide ions OH and OH and you can see very clearly there that we have one calcium two oxygens and two hydrogens so let's look at this next example, which is aluminium carbonate. So we've three elements here. We've got aluminium, carbon and oxygen. So let's take each one in turn. So we've got aluminium, first of all, it's Al2. That means there's two aluminiums and it's not inside the bracket. So we don't need to multiply it by anything else. OK, so it's just two aluminium atoms. Okay, next element along is carbon and make sure you don't mistake this and we'll come back to it in a second for cobalt, CO, um, and we'll come back to that in a second. This is carbon because it's capital C. Um, so there's carbon and inside the brackets we just have one. There's no number after the C. So it's just one carbon inside the bracket, but we multiply that by the number outside the brackets. So it's one times by three, which gives me three carbon atoms. And then finally, we've got oxygen and we know it's oxygen because it starts with a capital O. So we know we've moved on to a new element. So there's three oxygens inside the brackets and then we multiply that by three because there's a three outside the bracket. And um, so three multiplied by three is nine oxygen atoms. So just make sure you multiply and don't add and um, the um, one common mistake is for people to just add those numbers, say three plus three is six, but no, it's multiplied. Um, also, just be really, really careful about your elements, which we, we've just talked about there. So um, sometimes people look at carbonate, CO3, and think it is three cobalt ions or three cobalt atoms. Um, and that's because cobalt has the symbol CO. Um, so cobalt is capital C, small o. You can find it in your periodic table there. So you can see how that's different. That's a small o. So a new element will start with a capital letter. So if you want to um, put that, you can do. So a new element starts with a capital letter. Okay, so a new element starts with a capital letter. So capital C, capital O means that you have carbon and you have oxygen. Um, so to make sure you don't make any mistakes with counting up your atoms, because this is going to be so key when we calculate relative formula mass, and it's so important that you get um, this right and do it accurately. And then list all the different elements you have, being careful to separate out all the different elements. And then count up you have be really careful when you're dealing with brackets and um, so let's have a look um, at this table and then i will give you a chance to have a go at these yourself um so the first example is done for you and um, which is sodium chloride so you can see what we've done here is we've listed our elements so we have taken that as our first step List your elements, Na and Cl, that's your first step, and then count up. So don't try and count up as you go. So I've got Na, I've got Cl. There's no numbers after either of them. There's no brackets. So I just have one each. So that's my second step. I've got one of each. Let me do carbon dioxide with you, and then I'll let you try the rest for yourself. So the first step, do it. First of all, make sure you separate out your elements. Otherwise, you will get confused. So with carbon dioxide, you've got carbon and you have got oxygen to so separate and list your elements first of all and then count them up so with carbon there's no number after it so there's just one with oxygen there's a two after it so there's two of them so pause the video now and do that for each one list your atoms first of all and then count up um, how many of each type of atom you have so let me go through these really quickly just to check and um, so make sure you've had a go at them first and um, but just to check that you've got these right in your notes and haven't made any mistakes. So for copper chloride, um, I've got a copper and I've got a chlorine. I have one copper and two chlorines. For calcium sulfate, I have three elements. I have calcium, I have sulfur and I have oxygen. For calcium, there's just one of them. Sulfur, one of them. 
and oxygen, four of them. So make sure you've separated that out into sulfur and oxygen. Again, we know it's a new element because there's a capital O, so that starts a new element. Magnesium hydroxide, here's your first example with brackets. Again, I've got magnesium, I've got oxygen, and I've got hydrogen. You must separate out your oxygen and your hydrogen. They're different elements. So magnesium, there's no number after it, so I just have one of them. Oxygen, there's one inside the bracket, but that multiplies by two. So there's a total of two of them. And same with hydrogen, there is two of them. Ammonium nitrate, I have nitrogen, I have hydrogen. Yes, there's a nitrogen again, but I've already listed that, so I don't need to put it in my list again. So the next element is oxygen. So counting up your nitrogens, I've got one here and I've got one here. That's a total of two. With hydrogens, I've got four and oxygens, I've got three. Over on to page five then, you've got some more examples. If you haven't tried these yourself, pause the video, try them and then check them. Um, but let me go over them now, but make sure you've have had a go yourself. For lithium carbonate, um, you've got lithium, you've got carbon, you've got oxygen. For lithium, you've got two, carbon, you've got one and oxygen, you've got three. Aluminium nitrate, you've got aluminium, Al, you've got nitrogen and you've got oxygen. Counting up how many of each. Aluminium, you just have one. There's no number after it. Nitrogen, you've got one in the brackets, but that's multiplied by three. And then oxygen, you've got three in the brackets, but that's multiplied by three. So it is a total of nine. Calcium hydrogen carbonate then. You've got calcium, you've got hydrogen, you've got carbon, and you've got oxygen. How many of each? Calcium, you've only got one. Hydrogen, you've got two, because there's one in the bracket, but multiplied by two. Carbon, you've got two. And oxygen, it's three times by two, which is six. And then iron oxide, finally, is just iron and oxygen. Fe, you've got two of them. And oxygen, you've got three of them. So hopefully that should be straightforward enough, but it's about not becoming complacent with that and taking your time, making sure you do that properly. Um, because if you make mistakes counting up the atoms, then you will make a mistake when you're calculating the relative formula mass. So that's what we're going to move on to now, calculating the relative formula mass of a compound. And the relative formula mass, remember, is the mass of one formula of an element or compound. And how we work it out, particularly for a compound, is it's the total of the relative atomic masses of all the atoms present. Um, so if you had, for example, um, a water molecule, that's made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. So our two hydrogen atoms, they each have a mass of one. So hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of one. So if I have two of them, that's one plus one. And then I have one oxygen atom, which has a mass of 16. So how would I work out what's the relative formula mass of water? Well, I would take all those individual relative atomic masses and I would add them up. So one plus one plus 16. Um, is 18. Um, but for those atoms that are the same, we're going to group them together. Um, so we're going to work through a step-by-step -step method. And again, it's so important that you do it step-by-step. -step. And especially now at the start of doing these, that you um, do them really carefully and, and don't cut any corners. Um, so the first step is, if you're given the name of the compound, work out the formula. That is generally done for you. So in these types of questions, the formula is generally given to you. So you don't need to worry too much about that because they want you to have the formula right so that you can get the right relative formula mass. Um, next step is make a list of all the different elements you have. That's what we've just done above um, in, the ex in the table um, above. Then it says count up how many of each atom you have. Again, we've just done that in the table above. Um, so that was where we listed our elements and counted up how many we have. Then what we want to do is multiply the number of each atom by its individual relative atomic mass. And then finally, we add up the masses from each element present in the formula. Again, this is um, more easily looked at by an example. So turn over to page six and we'll look at an example of this. So we're asked in example one to calculate the RFM of water. Um, so let's work through step by step. And again, you're not going to write out each step each time, um, but let's do it for the first one. 
So step one is if you're given the name of the compound, work out the formula. Um, so the formula of water is H2O. Um, you may have to use swap and drop, but again, you're generally given the formula if they want you to calculate RFM. Next step is make a list of, of the elements that you have. Um, so we have hydrogen and we have oxygen. Next step, count up how many of each atom you have. So with hydrogens, we have two of them. And with oxygens, we have just one of them. Next step was multiply the number of each atom by its individual relative atomic mass. So we need to go to the periodic table for this. So make sure you have your periodic table there in front of you. So if we look at hydrogen, first of all, it appears like this on the periodic table. So its atomic number, which is the bottom number, is 1. And its relative atomic mass is 1. So this is the number we're interested in here. That's the relative atomic mass. So the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. But we need to think about how many hydrogen atoms we have. From step number 3, we find that we had two hydrogen atoms. So what we're essentially doing, um, what we need to do in this step, step number four, is multiply the number of each atom by its individual relative atomic mass. So we have two hydrogen atoms, each with a mass of one. And so that gives us a total mass of two. And then we need to do the same thing with oxygen. So again, we need to find oxygen on the periodic table. So find it now. So it appears like this in the periodic table, its symbol is O, its atomic number is 8, and its relative atomic mass is 16. So make sure you're always choosing the top number for the relative atomic mass. So it has a mass of 16. So relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Again, write this out for in full at this stage. We'll not do this every single time. Um, and then we need to think about how many oxygen atoms we have. So we only have one oxygen atom. So our multiplication for this is fairly easily easy. Um, and so we do 1 multiplied by the relative atomic mass of 16, which is 16. So we have two hydrogen atoms, each with a mass of one, so that gives us a mass of two in total, and one oxygen atom with a mass of 16, which obviously gives us 16. And then our very last step is to simply add up the masses from each element present in the formula. So simply here we're doing 2 plus 16, which gives you 18. So the relative formula mass of water is 18. And obviously the reason we need to do this is because compounds don't appear in the periodic table. For elements, I can just lift their relative atomic mass off the periodic table, like I've done with hydrogen and oxygen here. The periodic table tells me the relative atomic masses, but it doesn't tell me the mass of water. It doesn't tell me the mass of calcium hydroxide. I need to work that out from the individual relative atomic masses given to me. Um, so let's look at one other example. Um, and most of this has been written out for us. So example two, it says calculate the RFM of carbon dioxide. The formula is given to you there. And um, so we need to start from step number two. So if we look above, step number two is making a list of all the different elements you have. And that actually has um, been done for us. And um, so we would have we would have written that out um, in blue. Um, Next step then is number three, which is count up how many of each atom you have. So looking at your formula, you can see that you have one carbon atom and you have two oxygen atoms. Next step is multiply the number of each atom by its relative atomic mass. Um, so we need to find those from the periodic table. So find carbon first of all. The relative atomic mass of carbon you should see is 12. And the relative atomic mass of oxygen we've just seen is 16. So what we need to do is multiply the number of each atom by its relative atomic mass. So we've got one carbon with a mass of 12. So that's 1 times 12, which is 12. And then we have two oxygen atoms, so it's 2 multiplied by 16, because they each have a mass of 16. And that gives you 32. And so your relative formula mass is essentially the total mass, which is 12 plus 32, which gives you 44. So it's listing your elements, counting, counting up how many atoms of each type you have, 
working out its relative atomic mass from the periodic table, multiplying the number of atoms by the relative atomic mass and then totaling them all up. And again, this just takes a little bit of practice. So turn over with me now to page seven. So over on page seven and page eight, you have some questions where you're asked to calculate the relative formula mass of the formula given to you. Um, so I want you to have a go at these questions on your own. I'm going to take you through the first example just so you know how to set it out. Um, and then I want you to have a go at these yourselves because it's really, really important that you know how to do this by yourself. So the first formula here we have been given is CH4. So what we need to do is list our elements and um, count up how many we have. Now you'll notice um, here you've been given the relative atomic mass um, of each where it's been set out for. You haven't actually been given the value. You need to fill that in. Um, but it'd be better to line up the atom and how many there are with the corresponding relative atomic mass. But they'll come in order of the elements in the formula anyway. So the first one you have been asked to write down is the relative atomic mass of carbon. So let's count up how many carbon atoms we have. Um, so we've got carbon, first of all. How many do we have? We have one. Then we have hydrogen. How many do we have? We have four. Then what I would suggest you do is fill in your relative atomic masses and go from there. So relative atomic mass, where are you going to find that? You need to find it on the periodic table. So make sure you have your periodic table and you're using that well. So for this example, you've got carbon and you've got hydrogen. So the relative atomic mass of carbon, we can see, remember it's the top number. If you get confused and you can't remember which number it should be, remember you've got the key in the bottom left hand corner, which tells you the relative atomic mass is the top number. So relative atomic mass of carbon is 12, relative atomic mass of hydrogen is one. Then what do you need to do? You need to multiply the number of each atom by its relative atomic mass. So we have one carbon atom with a mass of 12. One times 12 is obviously 12. And then with hydrogen, we've got four hydrogen atoms with a mass of one, and that gives you a total of four for your hydrogen. How do we work out the relative formula mass? Well, it's simply add up the masses from each of your, your atoms. So we have 12 from our carbon, and four from our hydrogens, which is a total of 16. So again, I've just color coded them there just to, to show the different steps. So in purple there is the number of each atom and in green there is the relative atomic mass. So that just shows you the step of that, okay? So each one you should um, set out in the same way. Over in the next page, they start to get a little bit more sparse. You have to set um, them out um, yourself, but again, do it the same way. Count up your atoms, work out your relative atomic mass, do your multiplication, and then add all the individual masses up to get your RFM. So pause the video now and try these yourself. There's no point you just watching me go through them. You need to be able to do them yourself. So pause the video, try examples two to 10, and then make sure you check your answers to check you're doing them correctly. Okay, so you should have had um, examples two to 10 done now, or if you've done a few and want to check them, that's fine. Um, but make sure you've had a go at them first before you watch um, the answers. Um, so let me take you through them just to make sure that you're doing these correctly. Um, so for oxygen, you can see it's O2, you've got two of them. The relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Um, and so our multiplication here is we've got two oxygen atoms, each with a mass of 16. So that gives us 32. There's no other atoms involved here, so the relative formula mass is simply 32. And you can see how we can't use relative atomic mass here, because the relative atomic mass of oxygen is the mass of one atom, which is 16. But this is a molecule of oxygen, and there's two atoms, so we need to do 2 multiplied by 16. Okay, next example here is sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Um, so listing our elements and how many we have, you should have find that you have two hydrogen atoms, one sulfur atom, and four oxygen atoms. Your relative atomic mass of hydrogen is one. For sulfur, it's 32, and for oxygen, it's 16. So your multiplications here are you've got two hydrogen atoms, each with a mass of one, so it's just simply two times one, which is two. For sulfur, it's one sulfur atom with a mass of 32. This is one times 32, which is 32. 
And then for oxygen, you have four oxygen atoms, each with a mass of 16. And that gives you a mass of 64. And then it's simply adding them all up. So 2 plus 32 plus 64 is 98. If you find you're getting these okay, you can kind of fast forward through, but make sure you check each example. You don't need to watch me going through each example, um, but just if you do get any wrong, maybe rewind and check where you have gone wrong. But do check your final examples for each and mark your work. Make sure that it is marked correctly because you don't want any wrong examples in your notes. So continuing on with number four, you have one calcium, one carbon, and three oxygens. Your relative atomic mass of calcium is 40. Your relative atomic mass of carbon is 12 and of oxygen is 16. Um, so you have one calcium atom with a mass of 40. So that gives you a mass of 40. You have one carbon with a mass of 12 and that gives you a mass of 12. And then you have three oxygen atoms multiplied by its relative atomic mass of 16. And that gives you 48. So your relative formula mass is 40 plus 12 plus 48, which is 100. With number five, we need to be careful because we've got brackets here. So just be really careful when you're counting up your atoms. So for nitrogen, you can see that we've one inside the bracket, but we've had two outside the bracket, so we've got two in total. For hydrogen, it's four times two, which is eight. Sulfur is just one, and oxygen is four. Listing your relative atomic mass for nitrogen, it is 14. For hydrogen, it's one, sulfur 32, and oxygen 16. And then it's a simple case of doing your multiplication. So for nitrogen, it's 2 times 14, which is 28. For hydrogen, it's 8 times 1, which is 8. For sulfur, it's 1 times 32, which is 32. And for oxygen, it's 4 times 16, which is 64. And so then to get our total RFM, you just add them all up. So 28 plus 8 plus 32 plus 64, which should have given you a total of 132. And it's totally okay to use your calculator in, the, in this case. You will have one in an exam. Um, so you're more than welcome to use it and make sure you get these right. Over on page 8, you've got the example of magnesium hydroxide, first of all. So counting up your atoms, you should have one magnesium, two oxygens and two hydrogens. Um, in your brackets there. Your relative atomic mass for magnesium should be 24, oxygen should be 16, and hydrogen should be 1. So then your multiplication for um, magnesium should be 1 times 24 is 24, because you only have one magnesium atom. For oxygen is 2 times 16, which is a total of 32. For hydrogen is 2 multiplied by 1, which is um, 2. And then your relative formula mass is just the uh, sum of all of those masses. So 24 plus 32 plus 2, which should have given you 58. Now with number 7, um, you start to get a little bit less structure. But again, what we want to do is list our elements and count up how many we have. So the first element we have is iron, which is Fe. And I have two of them. Next element is oxygen. And I have three of them. What we want to do ultimately then is multiply those by the relative atomic mass. You can write those out individually um, if you want, or you can simply do your multiplication. So you can see that I have two um, iron atoms, and we multiply that by the relative atomic mass of iron. Um, on the periodic table, you should have found that's 56. So it's just 2 times 56, um, which is 112. And then with oxygen, it's three because you have three oxygen atoms multiplied by the relative atomic mass. You can see I'm sticking with the same colors. And the relative atomic mass is 16. And so that is 48. And your relative formula mass is just a case of adding those up. 112 plus 48, which should have given you 160. Next example is magnesium chloride. Again, list your elements, Mg, and you've got one of them. Chlorine. Um, and you've got two of them. Then you want to multiply those numbers by the relative atomic mass. So for magnesium, you've got one 
add a mass of 24 from your periodic table, which is 24. And for chlorine, you have two chlorine atoms, each with a mass of 35.5. So 2 times 35.5 is 71. So your relative formula mass is 24 plus 71, which is 95. Two more to check then. Um, lithium carbonate. So with this one, you should have two lithiums, one carbon, and three oxygens. Just be really careful that you separate that out into carbon and oxygen. Because it's a capital O, that means a new element. Um, and that is oxygen. Okay, um, our multiplication then for lithium should be 2 multiplied by the relative atomic mass of lithium, which is 7. And that gives us a mass of 14 from our lithium atoms. Carbon, you just have 1, so it's 1 times by 12, which is 12. Obviously, for these ones where you only have one of that type of atom, you can just write down the relative atomic mass because there's just one of them. Um, oxygen, then we have three of them, each with a mass of 16. So that gives us a mass of 48. And your RFM is just total them all up. 14 plus 12 plus 48 should give you 74. And one last one to do, just need to be careful with our brackets here. So let's list our elements and how many we have. So firstly, we've got aluminium and it's not inside the bracket. So I only have one of them. There's no number after it and it's not in the bracket. With nitrogen, um, there's one inside the bracket, but we need to multiply that by the three outside the bracket. So there's a total of three nitrogens. And then oxygen, there's three inside the bracket, but we multiply that by the three outside the bracket to give us nine. So with aluminium, my calculation is 1 multiplied by its relative atomic mass, which is 27. So that gives me a mass of 27. Nitrogen, there's three of them, each with a mass of 14. So that is um, 42. And then oxygen, there's nine of them, each with a mass of 16, which is 144. So your total RFM then is 27 plus 42 plus 144 is 213. So make sure you've checked through all of those. Make sure you've got the right answer and that you've actually marked them. You've ticked them off and that you've corrected them if you make any mistakes. Because it's crucial that you um, understand this. Um, this could be just simply a one mark question asking you to calculate the RFM of a certain formula. Or it could be part of a bigger calculation which we'll come on to shortly. Um, so it's really important that you know how to do this and are confident in it. If you want a bit more practice, um, it's just a simple case of writing different formulas, even going back to your um, equations booklet and just getting different formulas of compounds um, and calculating their RFM. Or even going back to the examples on page four and five, where we were counting up the number of atoms and seeing if you can work out the RFM of each of those formulas. Um, so you could try that. So if you want a bit more practice in that, um, go back to page four and five, look at the formulas of each of them um, and try working out your RFM. So the next section of this topic looks at calculating the percentage composition of a particular element within a compound. Um, so say, for example, um, you had a formula of um, calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Well, how could we work out the percentage of calcium within that formula and the percentage by mass of calcium um, specifically. Um, so to, in order to do this, you follow a very straightforward um, formula. Um, and it is in the box here. So essentially you need to learn this, but, but we will be doing practice of it. So um, it shouldn't be that you have to learn this word for word. You should be able to just learn how to do it. So essentially what we need to do um, is take the number of atoms of the particular element. So if we are trying to work out the percentage of calcium, say for example, it would be the number of calcium atoms in the compound. You multiply it by the relative atomic mass. You divide all of that by the relative formula mass of the compound, the total mass of the, the whole compound. And you multiply by 100% to get it into a percentage. 
it's a really key formula but again um let's look at an example which will um help us work this out so in order to do this we need three um, things we need to work out how many atoms are there in the formula we need to know the relative atomic mass of the element that we're trying to work out the percentage mass by and the relative formula mass of the compound so let's look at an example, um, sodium chloride. I always think it's best to calculate the relative formula mass at the start. So we'll keep that equation up there at the top um, because that's what we're going to be working from. So you can see from that equation, we need the number of atoms, the relative atomic mass and the RFM of the compound. Sometimes things think it's easier to work out the RFM at the start so that, um, so that we have that there ready to go. So sodium chloride, you can see that I have one sodium and one chlorine. Again, make sure your periodic table is there in front of you and see if you can calculate the relative formula mass yourself. Um, so you can see that we have one sodium. So we're essentially doing one times by the relative atomic mass of sodium. So find it in the periodic table. It's in group one. You should see that it has a mass of 23. And then we're adding that on to um, the relative atomic mass of chlorine times by the number of atoms that there are. There's only one chlorine, so again it's 1 multiplied by the relative atomic mass, which for chlorine is 35.5. Make sure you can see that clearly on the periodic table. So in this sense, we're essentially doing 1 times 23, which is 23, plus 1 times 35.5, which is 35.5. So if you want to expand that out, first of all, it's 23 plus 35.5. Essentially, if you only have one of an element, you can just add in the relative atomic mass. That gives us a total of 58.5 for the relative formula mass. Now let's go back up to this equation here. So we've worked out the relative formula mass of the compound. And so we need to put it into this equation now. So we've been asked to calculate um, the percentage of each element in this case. So let's take sodium, for example, first of all. So if I'm working out the percentage of sodium within NaCl, I need to take the first thing is the number of atoms of that particular element. So I can see within the formula there's only one of them. And then I multiply it by the relative atomic mass, which I know is 23. I divide by the relative formula mass, which I've worked out is 58.5, and multiply by 100%. So I would put um, this section into your calculator first of all. You can do it literally one times 23 and then press equals, then divide by 58.5 and then times by 100%. Or there may be a function on your calculator just to do that um, calculation overall in one go. So try and put that into your calculator now. If you don't have a calculator out, um, then pause the video, get a calculator out and try and put that into your calculator because it's important that you get practice in actually manipulating your, your calculator in that way. Um, so that should come out as 39.3%. And then let's say we take the percentage by of chlorine. Again, put it into that formula. You have one chlorine atom. Its relative atomic mass is 35.5. We divide it by the relative formula mass, which is 58.5. And then times by 100%. Don't forget to times by 100% at the end. Put that into your calculator now. And that should come out as 60.7%. Generally, we round these off to one decimal place. Okay, so it's as simple as that. The number of atoms times by the relative atomic mass divided by the relative formula mass of the compound and times by 100%. You're always following that formula. And let's look at an, another example together and then I'm going to get you to try some. So it says calculate the percentage composition by mass of lithium. So there's your key element. Um, I'm not asked to calculate them all this time. Generally in the exam they'll specify one of the elements within the formula. So the comp percentage composition by mass of lithium in Li2CO3. So again let's calculate the relative formula mass first of all. Okay. So I can see from my formula that I have two lithiums. So that's two multiplied by the relative atomic mass of lithium. 
which you should see on the periodic table is seven. Then you can see we've just got one carbon. So let's perhaps this time just put plus 12 because there's only one of those because one times 12 is gonna be 12 anyway. And then we've got three oxygens. So we need to do three multiplied by the mass of oxygen which is 16. So you can open those up first of all, if you like. Um, so that's 14 plus 12 plus 48, or you can just put those into your calculator and um, that first line into your calculator, but just make sure you use brackets because otherwise um, your calculators will do the multiplication first and so on. Um, and you might not get your right answer. And um, so that should come out as 74. So the relative formula mass of lithium carbonate is 74. I've been asked to work out the percentage composition by mass of lithium in Li2CO3. So looking back at my equation, I know that I need to um, multiply the number of atoms of the element I'm being, I'm being asked to work out the percentage of, in this case it's lithium. So it's the number of atoms of lithium multiplied by the relative atomic mass of lithium, divide by the RFM and times by 100%. So let's follow that. Again, you'll see that in front of you in the page. Um, so the percentage um, by mass of lithium. Well, I have two lithium atoms within my formula because it's Li2, multiplied by the relative atomic mass of lithium, which is seven, divide by the relative formula mass, which is 74, and then don't forget to times by 100% at the end. So again, you can do that in bits. You can do two times seven is 14, then divide it by 74, then multiply 100 by 100%, or you may, may be able to put this whole calculation into your calculator, whatever you're more comfortable with. So again, using your calculator, put that in, try that yourself, make sure you get this final answer. Don't just write it in from the video, but it should come out as 18.9%. And generally put your answers to one decimal place, unless the question tells you to otherwise. Um, and just above this example, it just says ways to check your answer. And um, one way to check your answer is if you are asked to calculate the percentage of each element um, within, the, um, within the formula, check that the individual percentages all add up to 100%, which in the first example they would have 39.3 plus 60.7 gives you 100%. But also things um, like, is your answer sensible? Um, if it's over 100%, then obviously it's not going to be the correct answer. So just make sure um, that your answer makes sense as well. So over on the next page, you have a few more examples of this, um, five in total. And what I would like you to do is pause the video now and give this a go. Um, so for each example, um, you're asked to work out the percentage by mass of a particular element. Um, so the first example is calcium hydroxide. You're given the formula in each case. Um, what you'll need to do first of all is work out your RFM. And then in the first example, you're asked to calculate the percentage by mass of oxygen. So I would work out your RFM first of all. Um, so in this example, um, again, if you're running out of room, room here, um, do it on a spare page and then you can write it in. But you should have enough room here. Um, take each element um, in turn. So you can see that you've got calcium first of all. You've only got one of them. So you can just write down the relative atomic mass of calcium, which is 40. Um, you'll need to add that on to um, your oxygen. So oxygen, you can see there are two in the formula overall because you've got one in the bracket multiplied by two. So it's two multiplied by the relative atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16. And then add that to, um, well, we can see hydrogen. There's two of them. There's one in the bracket multiplied by two outside the brackets and the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is one. So add those all together and you should get 74. Okay, in this example, you are asked to calculate the percentage by mass of oxygen. So remember our formula, the percentage of oxygen is going to be the number of oxygen atoms 
In this case, um, remember there are two oxygen atoms within my formula. There's one within the bracket, but that is multiplied by two. So it's two multiplied by the relative atomic mass. Keep going back to the equation on the previous page if you need it. So it's two multiplied by the relative atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16. And then divide that by the relative formula mass, which is 74, and times by 100%. If you put that into your calculator, you should get 43.2%. So remember, put your answers to one decimal place um, for each of these. Okay, um, and again, keep looking back to the equation on the previous page if you need it. So pause the video now and try the other four examples. Make sure you're confident in doing them yourself. And then play the video to check your answers and mark them off. So pause the video now and give these a go. Okay, so looking at number two here, magnesium chloride, um, you should have worked out that your RFM was 95 um, when you did the working out of that. You were asked to work out the percentage by mass of chlorine. So in this case, there are two chlorine atoms, each with a mass of 35.5. That's the relative atomic mass of chlorine divided by your RFM, which was 95 times by 100%. That should have come out as 74.7%. So could you mark that and tick that if it's correct? If it's not correct, pause the video now, go back and see, well, where did it go wrong? And see if you can correct that. With sodium sulfide, it should have been um, 78 for the RFM. Your percentage by mass of sodium should have been, well, there's two sodium atoms, so we need to do two times by 23, which is the relative atomic mass of sodium, divided by 78 and times by 100%. And that should have come out as 59.0% to one decimal place. The next one, aluminium nitrate, it's a little bit more tricky because of your bracket there, um, but the relative formula mass should have come out as 213. If you didn't get that again, pause the video, see if you can work out where you went wrong. Remember, you've got one aluminium, three nitrogens, and nine oxygens that you need to add together. You have to work out the percentage by mass of aluminium. Well, in this case, I only have one aluminium with a mass of 27. Divided by your RFM, which is 213, multiplied by 100%. And that gives you a percentage of 12.7%. And then finally, calcium sulfate. Your relative formula mass should have been 136. And percentage by mass of sulfur should have been 1 multiplied by 32. Divided by your 136 times by 100%. Which should have come out as 23.5%. So make sure you've marked all of those, corrected them if they're wrong, and make sure you understand those um, well. And again, you can give yourself extra practice by going back to the RFM calculations you did on page 7 and 8. And just pick an element for each of the examples um, and work out the percentage by mass of that particular element. But it's always following that same formula. The number of atoms multiplied by the relative atomic mass of that element divided by your total RFM and times by 100%. So it's the same each and every time. So that's us at the end of the first video for this topic. Um, so what you should be um, confident in doing now is um, recalling your definition for relative atomic mass. RAM, relative atomic mass. You should be able to find the relative atomic mass on the periodic table. You should be able to calculate the RFM of any formula from the individual relative atomic masses on the periodic table. And then you should be able to do these percentage composition calculations for any element within a given formula. So the next video will take you on to more of our moles calculations for this topic.